Okay, so today we're going to talk about using the discriminant to find the number of solutions, specifically in a quadratic equation, okay? And um, first of all, we have to figure out, well, what is the discriminant? The discriminant is actually part of the quadratic formula. So help me, help me again, what's the quadratic formula? X, everybody, X equals... Okay, good. Now, first of all, do you notice something like that? that is, um, let's see, there's two different parts to this, which is interesting. You already use um, axis of symmetry formula. What's the axis of symmetry formula? X is X equal to negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2A. Look at that. Negative B over 2A. You guys with me? Does that make sense? Isn't that interesting? So you, as long as you've memorized this, you kind of already know that negative B over 2A, right? Now the discriminant though is this. This is the discriminant. Discriminant. Isn't that discriminating? All right, that is the discriminant. So the discriminant actually tells you quite a bit. And so sometimes, sometimes people will ask, like, like all, most of the problems I've given you so far, I said you, I asked you to solve an equation, a quadratic equation, right? Meaning, find where it crosses the x-axis. Find x equals, right? x equals something. So you use quadratic formula and you plug it all in and you get x equals either 3 or negative 7 or something like that, right? You get two places where, um, where x is on, you know, on the x-axis, right? Well, sometimes the question is not to solve it, but it is to say, well, how many solutions are there? Oh, no. they're, you, they're, they're not saying solve it. They're not saying find the, x, find the two x-intercepts. They're just saying how many solutions are there? Okay? The discriminant is the thing that tells you that. <coughs> Notice what's right in front of the discriminant? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. <laughs> Why would plus or minus give you more than one answer? Well, one's a negative and one's a positive. Right. So you're actually, you're got, you've got your negative B, and then you're adding a number, and that gives you one number, and then you've got your negative B, and you're subtracting another, that gives you a totally different number, right? So you're going to have two numbers, right? So, um, so if I asked you to only find the number of solutions, not to solve it, but just to find the number of solutions of this problem, okay? Here's our first problem. We have, um, I don't know, 2x squared plus 6x minus... Um, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter. 9 equals 0, okay? If I gave you that and I asked you just to find the number of solutions, this is what you do. You would take square root of b squared, which is 6 squared, which is, well, I'll just write it. 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 9, okay? So what's that? That's going to be the square root of 36 minus... Plus. Minus 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 9 is positive what? 72. 72, right? All right. Do I need to keep adding this? Not really. I don't even have to figure out what 36 plus 72 is. I can, but I don't need to because all I care about is, is this number positive or negative or zero? Positive. Would you guys agree that's positive? Yeah. All right. Does every positive number have a square root? Yes. It may not be a perfect square root, but it might be, if I get on my calculator, if it was the square root, what is this? So 7108, 108. Get on my calculator. Did I do that right? 36, 7, 10, 8. Yeah, 108. So I'm going to do 108, 108, and then square root. 10.392304, and it keeps going and going and going. 
So it has a square root, right? As long as it's a positive number, you guys all with me? It always has a square root if it's a positive number, okay? It's not a perfect square root necessarily, but it is a square root. So think about it. If I have negative b over here and I'm adding or and subtracting this number from this, how many answers will I have? Yeah, I'll have two answers, right? Because I'm adding a square root of something and I'm subtracting a square root of something. So I have two answers, right? So immediately I know I have two answers. Does that make sense? Are you with me, Elizabeth? You get it? So if that number underneath the square root sign is positive, so here's our root. Yes, right. So look. So these are the, th the three scenarios. If the discriminant equals a positive number, okay? If it equals a positive, does that make sense the way I wrote it? Are you writing this in your notes? This is important because you're going to need it for your homework. If the discriminant is a positive, maybe I won't say equals, I'll just say is, is positive, then how many solutions? Two. Two, two solutions, right. Then two solutions. Okay, and then two, you already know the answer to this one. If discriminant is negative, then how many solutions? If you have the square root of negative 39, how many solutions were there? It's unsolvable. It's unsolvable. There's no solutions, right? So, and zero, zero solutions. solutions. All right, there's one, third, one more scenario. <gasps> if the discriminant is zero, all right, then, and let's think about this for a second. So the square root of zero is zero. Let's let me give you another problem. Let's try another one. Two. Uh, y is equal to um, x squared plus six x plus nine. All right. So my discriminant. Let's try my discriminant. So what's my b? Uh, six squared. So six squared is what? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Minus 4, what's my A? And 1. 1, what's my C? 9. 9. Okay, <coughs> so what is 4, 1? What is 4 30. times 1 times 9? 4 times 1 is 4. 36. 36. So we've got the square root of 36 minus 36. What is that? 0. That's the square root of 0. Which All is right. 0. Now, let me ask this. If I had, a, let's go back to this quadratic formula for a second. If I had a number, negative b, and I'd added plus or minus the square root of zero. What's the square root of zero? Zero. Yeah. Alright, so if I have negative b plus or minus zero. There's one answer. There's always going to be one answer. It's always There's only going to be one answer. Do you see why? Because if I add nothing to negative b, I still have negative b. But if I subtract nothing from negative b, oh, I still have negative b. Right? I haven't changed Zero doesn't change anything, whether I add or subtract it. So there's only one answer, which happens to be negative b. One right? solution. <laughs> Over 2a, right? Over 2a. It's going to be one solution. Right. So yes, then only one solution. Only one solution. Do we have math tutoring today? Uh, yes, there is a math tutoring today. Um, if so, if discriminant is positive. Okay, so. <laughs> See, that was fast. We're done, basically. Well, let's try a couple. Well, these are like so easy. They just get started on our homework. Right, they are easy. Yeah. The problem is, you will forget it. Right? <laughs> That's the truth. And so, if you can make logical sense out of it, you don't have to me remember it. You don't have to memorize it. Because if it makes sense that if if what's underneath that is positive, there's going to be two answers. Oh, we don't have to write the answer. We just if write If what's two under answers. there is negative, there's no answers. If what's under there is zero, there's only one but answer. It does Gary, make a lot of sense. Do you want us to write the answers, or do you want us to just write two answers? Like just yeah. So your answer would be like, hey, so let's do it. You just say two answers, okay. two solutions, or three solutions. So you don't have to I solve mean, it. well, mm -hmm. one solution or zero solutions, not three solutions. Um, you don't have to solve it. Oh, well. All you need to do. 
if they ask this question, okay, find the number of solutions. Remember, solutions means, in a quadratic equation, it means finding the zeros, finding the roots, finding the x-intercepts. Those are all the same things, right? Solutions, solve, x-intercept, zero, roots, all the same thing. All right, find the solution, the number of solutions. And they give me y is equal to, you know, 5x squared plus um, um, 12x minus 10. It looks scary. All right, find the number of solutions, not solve it. All I need is the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's all I need. So b squared, 12 squared is 144, Wait. right? Oh, yeah. And then minus 4 times 5 times negative 10. Negative 10. Is that going to be a positive number yep. or a negative number? Negative. Well, but it'll make it positive. It's, it's positive. negative 4 times negative 10 is positive 40 times 5, right? No. It's 200. <coughs> Plus, that is a positive number because you've got the minus sign here, you've got the minus sign there. Minus times minus is positive. So I know immediately that we're going to be adding this number to 144. Is this going to be a positive number or a negative number? Positive. 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 Therefore, how many solutions? Two. Immediately I know it's two solutions. So I write two solutions and I put that in a box and I'm done. Does that make sense? What? Um, uh, we only have three minutes. We don't have any yeah. Okay. So does that make sense? You don't have to solve it. All you have to do is, if this is positive, then this is what you say, two solutions. If this is negative, if that is negative under there, if it was 14 minus 200, it would be negative, right? So immediately I write no solutions. If it was 144 minus 144, meaning zero, I would write one solution. Does that make sense? Yes, question, Alex. Wait, wait, but it's not 4 times 5, it's negative 4 times 5. Right? Um, okay, so I'm going to turn this off.